So one of the things that makes public relations different from areas like marketing and advertising is that it's really a true two way process. It's about developing relationships and building relationships, just like you, you have in all other forms of communication, um, such as building an interpersonal relationship. Public relations involves to a certain extent, connecting with other people, getting connected, getting to know people, introducing yourself to somebody else. There's also an element of maintaining that relationship and doing what you, going through the relational maintenance behaviors that you have in other types of relationships. And really, I, I bring this up because a couple of the key ways that we do that, that we connect with, with our, our publics and, and maintain those relationships is through things like newsletters and brochures, which may sound way more boring than things like working with television or radio or even social media and things like that. But they're really foundational elements. They're, they're, the, they're the bread and butter of uh, public relations, the way that we connect with our audiences and publics and the way that we maintain those relationships in many ways. So I want to spend just a few minutes talking about how, what they are, what they represent, how they're used, and how we can use them most effectively in public relations. So we're going to start with brochures because this is kind of like connecting. This is kind of like the introduction to, to your public, right? Oftentimes it can come through something like a brochure. They have to learn about you somehow. So a brochure is a great way to do that. So what is a brochure? It's just an informative paper document, uh, often used for sharing promotional material. So it's oftentimes used for introducing an organization or introducing a program or, you know, making that connection, that initial connection with a public or with an audience and sharing um, that, that really basic fundamental information with them. I kind of think a brochure is kind of almost like an elevator pitch, right? You have just a very short amount of time to really connect with that audience and, and do so effectively as in an elevator speech, you got 20 to 30 seconds to sell your idea to the big boss and the decision maker or whatever. A brochure can really act in that same way. It can, it can make a difference between somebody being interested in what you are doing and not being interested in what you're doing. So an effective brochure can help you uh, in many ways. So what are some different ways that we use brochures just really quickly? I um, want to highlight some of these. First of all, we can use it just to introduce an organization's purpose and services. So just a, just a general, how are you? Literally introducing the organization, introducing the cause, the campaign, whatever it is, uh, so that people have the basic information about who you are, what you're doing, what you're all about. You can use it to answer some FAQs. Right? If you get the same kinds of questions on all kinds of stuff and you get kind of tired of explaining it, writing it down, sending the same message or whatever, maybe a brochure would help people understand some of these, these commonly asked questions, these frequently asked questions um, before they ever um, bring them up to you. Even. You can answer them before they even uh, get to know you at all. You can use it to provide instructional information. And I'm sure you've all had this at uh, when we've gone to the doctor, maybe they've given you a pamphlet on a particular illness on, you know, on diabetes or high blood pressure or whatever it is that they think may be ailing you. You may get an informational brochure about that. We can use it in that way as well for any organization, any cause. We can use it to provide instructional information. Here's how to do this or here's, you know, uh, so it can act as kind of a how to guide in many ways. And you can use it to promote a program or event, especially like a consistent long-term program or event that you have going on. I can, if it's something short-term or temporary brochures may not be as helpful because they're not going to be around long enough. And then you, you may be stuck with all these extras, but if it's something that's kind of a regular, consistent, long-term thing, then it could be a, a great way for you to, to put it together in a really nice package and provide that information to people. You can use it to share your contact details with people. So, um, and I know we have websites and things for all that, but, uh, but it's kind of nice sometimes to have something tangible. I like something that I can sit on my desk in part to remind me that I wanted to contact these people and to have those details right there in front of me is really helpful to know how to get to their website or get to their phone number and just have an easy access right there. So you can use it to share your contact details. So, these are just a few basic examples of how we can use brochures in public relations. There are lots of other uses as well, but, but these are just some of the more common ones and some, some ways that, uh, that we can use brochures to kind of help I can make that connection, provide that basic information for people right at, right up front, right at the start. So a couple tips on brochures. Now note that these are not going to be like heavy graphic design type tips and, and for, you know, layout and design and things like that. This is just more again about, how do we use these things effectively and functionally in public relations? So my first tip for using brochures is that you need to have a purpose. There should be a reason for this. You shouldn't just be creating a, a brochure 
because you think you ought to have a brochure. If you don't have a specific reason or a specific purpose, then you probably don't need a brochure. The brochure should be serving a specific function and a specific purpose. So be sure you've identified that and identified that this is the best way for you to achieve that objective, that purpose. Next, you need to have a plan. You can't just, you shouldn't just wander into this and kind of haphazardly throw something together. You need to have a plan for what needs to be in this brochure. What information needs to be there again, based on the purpose that you've identified. What information do we need? Is this the best way to distribute it? Uh, how, what should the layout be just in general? Like what should be in the different areas of the brochure? How should the information be organized? Uh, am I going to need help doing this? Uh, all of this. Is this something that I feel like I can do by myself or do I need some assistance here? Which is okay as we'll, as we'll get to in a second. Uh, but you ought to have a plan going into this before you really sit down and start putting pen to paper or, or really doing intense design work. We need to use words wisely. Um, first of all, you, brochures are fairly concise. They should not be overly wordy, which just means that every word we do use needs to have a function, a purpose, needs to send a message. It needs to be very carefully chosen, both the, the language that we use and the words that we choose to include in there, but then also how are they laid out? What are, the, are we using proper punctuation and grammar? Those are things that send a message. I mean, all that stuff. We need to use language as wisely as we possibly can and put a great deal of thought into not just the creation and the writing of this, but also the production of it and the, the layout and the, the, um, the, the editing of these messages and things. So be sure we're using language and choosing language carefully and using it wisely in these brochures. Because we have a limited amount of space, a limited amount of words for these things. This ought to be designed for the reader. Um, you may be able to design this amazing brochure that you think is incredible right? and does, you know, and, and, you know, looks great and has what you think ought to be in there. But it doesn't matter if the reader doesn't get what they need out of it. Right? If it's not effective and appealing for the reader, for your audience, then it is a waste of time. And you shouldn't bother doing it in the first place. So you need to design this with the reader in mind that you need to have the, the recipient in mind at all times. As we go through this, think about what's going to be appealing to them. What language is going to be effective for them? What graphics are going to be things that pull them in and help them understand the information effectively. And, and so I can design with the reader in mind at all times. Keep in mind that poor quality makes a poor impression. If you put together one that's kind of sloppy, it doesn't have to be totally professionally glossy paper, you know, whatever, all the, all the real intense creases and things in there, but, but it should look nice. This represents your organization. If this is the people, if this is somebody's first impression of your organization, what impression are they going to get from this? Uh, if, if you're willing to put out a, a substandard um, product in your brochure, then how can they have confidence in what you're putting out? as a, as a, as a, uh, a service or a quantity or as a, you know, as a, as a, as a cause outside of that as well. So you need to make sure that, uh, that what you're putting out is a high, is as high quality as, as you can possibly make. And that certainly that it's not low quality and going to make a poor impression on people. Uh, and finally, I mentioned this before, but call in a pro if you need it. Um, we don't know. We're not all great designers. If you haven't done this before, if that's just not your thing, you're not really a, a design and layout person, or even if it's just the technical aspects, because laying out a brochure can be kind of technically difficult if you're not really immersed in the different softwares that are used and things. Don't hesitate to call in some assistance, whether that's somebody from in-house or whether it's, you know, somebody who's going to be printing it off. A lot of times people who print this will have those services available to you. So don't feel like you have to do it all with this brochure. Certainly the content, the purpose, those types of things are going to need to come from you. But there's no shame and no harm in calling in a pro for the design and, and you know, how to employ graphics effectively and things if that's not really your thing. And you want the best product you can put out there. And if that means bringing somebody else in to really pull from their expertise, then that's what you ought to do. Okay. Shifting gears a little bit away from brochures and into newsletters, thinking less about okay, connecting with somebody and more about maintaining that relationship, as we talked about. You know, relationships require maintenance as well. All relationships require maintenance, right? Our public relations relationships require maintenance. Our relationships with our audience, with our publics require maintenance as well. And a good way to do that and a really effective and cost effective way to do that is through newsletters. A newsletter is very simply a printed or electronic report containing news 
concerning the activities of a business or an organization that is sent to its members, customers, employees, or other subscribers. So a couple things to note here. First of all, it can be printed, it can be electric, it can take a lot of different forms and formats, and it can look a lot of different ways. So uh, newsletters take all different shapes and sizes and, and forms, right? Um, so that's one aspect. Secondly, just remember, you're just updating people. Newsletter is, I mean, it's right there in the name, news. It's a letter about news. What's new? We're going to talk about how do we use a newsletter, but it's basically just updating people on what's happening with your organization and with your cause and what do they need to know about that at the moment. And then finally, it can be used for different audiences, as you see here. Um, it can be used for maybe your customers, and they may receive one kind of newsletter, but you can also use it to keep your employees updated or keep your team updated on different things. Uh, uh, so you need to think about, again, think about the audience and think about what's going to be most effective for them. What do they need from this? So what are some different uses that we have for newsletters and different ways that we can use that newsletters in public relations? First, uh, just to simply share the news. Again, it's right there in the name. We can use just to update people on what's happening, uh, any new initiatives or or things like that, changes in our service and our cause and, and updates just on all kinds of stuff. So share the news with your with your audience. You can use it to tout your achievements if you won an award because of this or if you hit a significant benchmark or whatever it is. Let people know through your newsletter. Tout your achievements. Toot your own horn a little bit in the newsletter. You can use newsletter effectively by using it to control the narrative. You have control of the narrative in your newsletter. When you outsource to a different, uh, like a uh, different um, media outlet or, or something like that, right? That you know you, you're trying to get them to pick up your story. That's fine, but but then they control the narrative. They decide how it gets talked about and 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 what gets said about it and who gets the information, if anybody. But when you control the newsletter, you can control the narrative. You put your own spin on it. You decide what goes in, what doesn't. You decide uh, what you know what that's going to sound like to people. So you have total control of that narrative. So sort of along similar lines to that, uh, when you when you put out your own newsletter, it means you're not dependent on outside media or any kind of third party. Right? You can do it yourself. You you control what goes into it. And, uh, and when it's released and, and uh, how people receive it and all of these things, um, you don't have to depend on anybody else for that kind of thing. Um, when you're trying to get something you know, plugged into a media outlet, media outlet um, then it's up to them whether or not they run it and what's, what spin they put on it and all those types of decisions. But, um, but when you do it yourself, you're not dependent on any kind of outside media um, channel for that, that, um, that service. You can also use a newsletter to establish your credentials for content expertise. So let's say you, you're trying to establish your organization or you yourself as an individual, as an expert in a particular area, you can put out regular news, newsletter content about that area and try and um, use that as a way to leverage you people's um, perception of you as an expert in that field. So if your organization has to do with environmental issues and you put out a newsletter um, on environmental issues and so forth, and, and people start to see you then as kind of an expert in that field, as, as having some expertise in that area. And so you can use a, a newsletter to try and create some of that and generate some of that content expertise, uh, in, at least in, in people's minds. And then finally, newspapers are very useful because they're just low cost. Uh, especially if you're using an electronic form and, and putting it out yourself, really, you don't have a lot of um, financial cost in that. There's some opportunity cost. Of course, you've got to write the articles and put everything together and, and that takes time and to do it well takes time, but, um, but certainly it's lower cost than um, different types of paid media or even trying to chase down oftentimes some earned media, especially when you consider that, um, that, that your odds of getting a story in are not as nearly as good as, uh, as just doing it yourself and putting out your own newspaper newsletter when you have a hundred percent chance to get your information in there in the exact way that you want it. So uh, overall, it's just a really low cost, um, option and, but can be very, very effective as well. So a couple tips for um, using newsletters and for putting the newsletters together and using them effectively. Um, the first couple I'm just going to throw up here as a lump because it has to do with what we just talked about before with brochures. Newspapers like brochures should have a purpose. 
You should have a reason for existing and, uh, and a, an objective behind them. You should have a plan for how you're going to put it together and what you're going to include and what you're going to exclude and all of that stuff. You need to have a plan for how this is going to work and you need to use words wisely. You don't have an unlimited number of words in these uh, documents. So you need to use language wisely, choose the right words in the right language, use punctuation and grammar and, and all those things properly, and uh, just use your words as wisely as you possibly can. Excuse me. Another thing with newsletters is that you want to try and grab attention with headlines. Now, did aliens take Elvis? Uh, no, they did not. As far as I, as far as I'm aware, they did not take Elvis. So, so the headlines ought to be accurate. They ought to have to do with what that article has to do with. But again, language is important. Use your words wisely. Grab attention with headlines and pull people in. Try and make them understand what they're going to get out of that newsletter uh, from just looking at that headline and, uh, and, and entice them. Uh, invite them to come in and, and read the rest of it then. So grab attention with your headlines. Remember, you got to make it worthwhile for the, the reader as well. So for your audience, there's a cost in this for your audience. The cost is the time that it takes to read this newsletter. If the, even if there's no, even if you're not charging for this newsletter, it still takes time to read it. And so we need to make it worthwhile. Again, we ought to have that purpose, that plan and put it together in a way that says, okay, is this worthwhile for the audience? Is I making, am I making this worth the audience's time and energy? Uh, and then finally, you want to keep a regular schedule, right? You want to keep a regular schedule with this, if at all possible, um, and have some consistent cadence to how you're releasing this information. Uh, you know, when you when think about your heartbeat, you don't want it to look like this, right? All irregular and, 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 you know, beating sometimes and not others and different, different, uh, rates. And, and so when you look at your, 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 you know, your heart, your sinus rhythm there or whatever, it should not be all over the place, right? It should look like this consistent, but, but, but it should be consistent like that. Your newsletter should be the same. You know, it should be the same. It, it should be, if you're going to you know, pick a day if, and, and don't put yourself in a situation either where you're like, oh, I'm going to have a daily newsletter because then you've got to have a daily newsletter, right? And start off slower. Start off with a monthly newsletter if you want. And then if you decide you need to have more information to share and people are interested, you could update it. You can do it twice a month. Then you can move it to a week long or whatever. But but think about uh, I think about this with podcasts, for example. Most podcasts have kind of, you know, a regular rhythm for when they release their, their contents, people know to be expecting it, first of all. So they know to be expecting it and they know to make time in their schedule for it. And they know to go look for it or whatever. It's always hard when somebody, you know, a podcast or, or a YouTuber or something like that doesn't have a regular schedule and it just it kind of catches you by surprise. It can slip by. Some of these things can slip past you. So I would encourage you to keep a regular schedule with your newsletters. And then finally, again, just like brochures, call it a pro if needed. If you're not a graphic design expert or if you're not a writer or whatever aspect, you're not an expert in here, um, call in some assistance and get some assistance. There's a lot that goes into these things. You don't have to be an expert in all of it, but you, you ought to be able to and willing to call somebody else in to help with wherever your shortcomings are with this type of process. Okay, so in general, just remember that, that newsletters are about telling your story. It's about sharing your story with your public, with your audience, maintaining that relationship. Uh, brochures help us make that connection initially. The newsletters help us maintain that relationship and share information in that way, right? So that we can get our story out there both initially and then over time and share with people so they can, they can grow with you and grow with, uh, with your organization and your cause and whatnot. If you have questions about uh, newsletters or brochures or anything, you know, document oriented like that, again, they're, it's, I know it doesn't have the flash of some of the new media stuff or even television, radio and, and those types of things, but they are critically important. They are foundational. Um, you know, these are the, these are the bricks that, that build a house in public relations, right? It doesn't have the, the flashy design elements, but, but these are the things that keep things moving. This is how you can connect with an audience and, maintain that relationship with your public uh, as in public relations is with, you know, regular, consistent resources in, in areas like this. So uh, I hope this has been helpful for you. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. Uh, in the meantime, I hope this has been um, uh, relevant and that you now have a, maybe a deeper appreciation for not only what goes into uh, the choices behind these types of things, but how you can use it more effectively in your own public relations pursuits.